Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over how to use Newton's second law to calculate the acceleration of an object with horizontal motion that's moving across a surface with friction. Okay, I'm going to run through three different examples. And the first one says here that we have a rightward force of 20 Newtons applied to an object that has a mass of 7 kilograms. It's accelerating across this rough surface and the force of friction is 10 newtons. We want to draw all, draw and label all the forces, calculate the acceleration of the object. Okay. Now it's not really particular in this case because we know that it's a, the forces, but we want to make sure we remember that it is accelerating, and that means that when we draw the free body diagram, that we have to have an uh, unbalanced forces. Okay. So let's get started. We know that we're going to use Newton's second law, which says that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And before we sum up the forces and calculate the acceleration, we are going to draw all the forces, label them, and determine and calculate their magnitudes. So the first force is the force due to gravity that points downwards towards the center of the Earth. Now the object is sitting on a surface. It's not falling through that surface, so the surface provides an equal and opposite force. We call that the normal force. And then we have the applied force, it says, is 20 newtons. That's the applied force. And it does say that there is acceleration. It's a rough surface. Therefore, we know that the acceleration, excuse me, that the friction force is opposite the applied force. Okay? So we drew the forces. We labeled them. Now we're going to calculate them. And the first one that we're going to calculate is the force due to gravity. We use a special form of the F equals MA equation, which basically just says F equals MG, G being the acceleration due to gravity, and we calculate the weight. We calculate the weight force or the force due to gravity, or the force of that object from gravity. We uh, are going to use the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second. So this says F equals MG. We take the mass, 7 G, 9.8 meters per second. That's what G will always be on Earth because on Earth things always accelerate or near the Earth's surface they always accelerate at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared and then we know that the weight of that object the force due to gravity is 68.6 .6 newtons we write negative because it's a downward force we'll assume downwards is the negative direction we know that the normal force has to be equal and opposite so we're going to put plus 68.6 .6 newtons and that is the weight force and or the force due to gravity and then the corresponding normal force all right now we were told that the applied force is 20 newtons plus to the right and the friction force is 10 newtons negative to the left negative is just the direction of the force okay it's not a negative force it's a force in the negative direction okay now we can apply newton's second law we're going to rearrange the equation so that we know that the sum of the forces is equal to, excuse me, the acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces divided by the mass. And in this case, the only two forces we know we need to consider uh, are the applied force and the friction force because they are in the horizontal direction, the horizontal plane, in the x plane. And therefore, we're going to add those two forces together. The plus 20 newtons is the plus 20 is the applied force plus a minus 10 which is just 20 minus 10 and that is the friction force because the friction force acts, acts in the opposite direction divided by the mass the mass being 7 kilograms which turns out to be 10 positive 10 divided by 7 and you get the acceleration in the positive direction of 1.43 meters per second squared a Newton is a kilogram meter per second divided by a kilogram the kilograms cancel and we're left with meters per second squared okay so we did everything we got it all taken care of ahead of time. We did all the labeling and the f calculating the magnitude of the forces, and then we applied Newton's second law. All right, so let's do the same thing again. All right, now we have a leftward force that's applied of 8 Newtons to a 10 kilogram object. It's a rough surface, constant velocity, the coefficient of friction. There is friction, okay, rough surface, kind of for emphasis here. Coefficient of friction is greater than zero. And in this case, the thing we want to notice here is that we have a constant velocity. And what does that mean? If the velocity is constant, it means the forces are balanced. So when we draw them, we're going to have to draw the object with balanced forces, and that's going to help us to figure out the friction force. Once again, we're going to use Newton's second law. We're going to draw all the forces and get their magnitudes before we do any calculating for the actual acceleration. We have the friction, the force of gravity is downwards. 
it's on a surface, we have a corresponding normal force, we have our applied force is to the left, and we have the friction force is to the right. Okay? Now, the first thing we're going to do again, I like to do is always do the gravitational force first. So the force due to gravity is just F equals mg again, g being the acceleration due to gravity, which means it's 10 times 9.8, because it's a 10 kilogram object, which means it's 98 newtons, which means the force from gravity is 98 newtons, and it's in the negative direction. Okay? We have a corresponding normal force of positive 98 newtons, and then we were told that the applied force is 8 newtons, and so therefore we write that as 8. Now, it doesn't give us the force due to friction. But as I pointed out earlier, it does say that it's a constant velocity. Constant velocity means the forces have to be balanced. And because this is minus 8, uh, and, uh, a, a magnitude of 8 in the negative direction, we know the friction force has to be positive 8 or 8 in the positive direction, like that. And now, because it's a constant velocity, and we're going to calculate the acceleration, if the velocity is constant, therefore we know the acceleration is going to be 0. But let's just prove it to ourselves, and just to be sure, the acceleration, once again, is the sum of the forces divided by the mass. The acceleration, now the sum of the forces is just these two, the force of friction, the force uh, applied, because we're talking about horizontal motion, we're not concerned with these uh, gravitational and the normal force, and of course, plus 8, minus 8, divided by 10, and plus 8, minus 8, if you check that on your calculator, is 0. 0 divided by 10 is 0, and indeed, we proved it mathematically, and the problem told us that it was constant velocity, so we knew the acceleration had to be 0, and indeed, it did turn out to be 0. Okay, so it's always nice when those things work out like that. Okay, so that is one where we're going to use friction from the fact that the velocity is constant. Okay, let's do one more. This one says a rightward force is applied of 14 newtons. The object has a mass of 10, 5 kilograms. It's across a rough surface, and this time they gave us the coefficient of friction, and we're going to have to calculate the friction force, okay? And then we're going to calculate the acceleration. So once again, we're going to use Newton's second law, F equals ma. Before we can do that, we need to write down and draw all the forces, gravity downwards, normal force up. Uh, let's see, it says a rightward force of 14 newtons is our applied force, and then we have our friction force in the opposite direction like that. The gra we have a coefficient of friction of 0 0.15. We're going to need that to calculate the friction force. Okay, because it does say on here, um, well, it, it, we're going to have to calculate the friction force. So we have uh, F equals m, uh, mg, 5 kilograms, 9.8. It gives us 45 newtons. The gravitational force is minus 45. The normal force is plus 45. The applied force is 14 newtons in the positive direction, and we have to now figure out what the friction force is going to be. It doesn't tell us what the friction force is going to be, but we know we can calculate the friction force using this equation. This equation says that the force due to friction is equal to mu, this is mu, that's the symbol for the coefficient of friction, times the normal force. So this is just the coefficient of friction times the normal force, and we get 0.15 times the normal force, which is 45 newtons, and we get 7.35 newtons, and that is going to be our friction, our force due to friction, and that is minus 7.35. Okay, so now we got all the forces drawn, labeled, and calculated, and now we can use Newton's second law again. Sum of the forces divided by the mass. The acceleration is going to be, now we have two forces in the horizontal direction. We have horizontal motion. It's plus 14 to the right, or I should say plus 14 plus minus 7.3, which is 14 minus 7.35, and divided by the mass is 5, and we can do that, and we get a positive value of 1.33 meters per second squared. Okay, so the object is accelerating to the right. It's accelerating with a, an acceleration of 1.33 meters per second squared. Okay, so in this case, we were given uh, enough information to calculate the weight force, the force due to gravity, and then we had to use the coefficient of friction, this symbol mu is the coefficient of friction, and we had to use the equation, the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force to figure out and calculate what the force due to friction is going to be, and then we just applied Newton's second law again. Okay, so I hope that was helpful.
Thank you very much for watching. If you thought that was helpful, you could leave me a comment or a thumbs up in the comment section. And thank you very much. We will see you next time.